Welcome back. As I mentioned earlier as the, at the start of the show, we're we'll looking um, at the fuel subsidy, the call for review of uh, minimum wage, and of course, uh, what the unified forex uh, means uh, for us as Nigerians. I'm now being joined by international finance and economics analyst, Mokhtar Mohammed. Nice to have you join us again, Mokhtar. Top of the week to you. Thank you so much. Yeah, this how is the first uh, week. We'll have a full, um, a full week after the Yes, yes, when we had them holidays. And there's another holiday coming up sometime next week uh, in a democracy day on June 12. <laughs> so many holidays in June. Well, let's just move on to the business of the day. Uh, so good morning once again. Let's talk about uh, this whole uh, fuel subsidy matter. In the wake of it all, uh, labor unions are demanding uh, a revert to the status quo while negotiations are continuing tomorrow and meets demand for a review of wages for workers and a pendant strike on Wednesday. Are these steps in order, really, Mukhtar? I mean, you don't expect labor to keep quiet. Um, <laughs> they, they will definitely re re respond. And I think they responded well. Um, whether they're in unity, and uh, that's uh, uh, it's a topic for another day because we are seeing that the government is meeting with the trade union congress, and uh, normally the trade union congress and the labor congress all meet together with the government. So hopefully we expect that the government should reach out to the largest um, trade organization, which is the Nigerian Labor Congress, and see how they can resolve these issues. Uh, will they reverse back? I, I don't think so. Oh, I don't think so. Uh, even if you if you want to hear what Taylor Lake is saying, we, in your interview, we are not thinking of uh, reversing back, but we are looking at policy that will, re will reduce the hardship on Nigerians. That's what the um, government is looking at. And if I hear correctly what you said in your introduction, uh, the government also is looking at um, um, tax uh, re uh, holiday for workers. They are looking at other things. I, I think for me, that's a good thing. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on the advocate that advocate for the removal of subsidy for it. For over uh, 15 years now, I've been saying that subsidy is doing this economy no good. So finally, if we have a president that's taking the bull by the horn to do that, we have to support him. Even if the way he went about it, most of us will say, okay, you, you, you the, the speech, you didn't have to do it the way you did it, but definitely, but you had to do it. And we must not forget that the three presidential aspirants, the three major presidential aspirants, the APC, the PDP, and the Labour Party, has always agreed on one thing. They all agreed on during their campaign was that subsidy will go. So subsidy have gone, and I think um, um, it's it, it is the right decision. Okay, but now we need to be, begin to look at um, subsidy payment in the productive area. There's no uh, there's no uh, government that does not subsidize uh, for its uh, for for its citizens. And I like what Dela Laki is saying now. Uh, if they are going to do subsidy, subsidizing the area of tax, mm. that would be fantastic because that is me here subsidizing from the productive sector of the Nigerian economy, which is good. So that way we advocate subsidy should be there, but it should be in the productive sector where we'll see results, not in the consumption sector. Because what we're doing is like a man, you are earning your, your salary and all of your salary, you keep on spending it on uh, on, on consumption uh, without investing. So, so it's good because our main cash car is oil. We need to begin to invest it, and then government can in turn take a bite in the productive sector of the economy by paying um, by by subsidizing that sector. Then it has an effect on the generality of the economy. That's what we are saying. So, is minimum wage alone will not do the magic. Uh, that, that's why I'm happy. Implementing minimum wage will, alone will not do the magic. But with what they are trying to put on ground now, could be a game changer. You look at subsidy in the agricultural sector in the area of machines that are being imported. You look at subsidy for manufacturers. It could be that they could assess effects at a at a unified good rate that will attract for foreign investors. So those are part of the subsidy you give to your economy that is beneficial to everybody. Subsidy in the energy sector. We've seen that play out in other economies of the even Ghana, our neighbor here, the United Kingdom. So those are the type of subsidy that we we, we crave for. Productive subsidy, not consumption subsidy. All right, fine. Uh, um, Mokta, a whole lot has been said, but I have a concern really now. They are constituting 
committee, a tripartite committee, which is going to include state, organized labor, and the private sector to study the dynamics and come, um, come out with specific numbers. But uh, how far can this go? Because committees would meet, and labor is saying they're actually going on strike on Wednesday. Can we afford, as in Nigeria, afford another uh, labor strike at this particular time? No, we cannot. We cannot afford a labor crisis at this time, and we, we, we have security challenges, and we don't want Putlum to adjust a, a very peaceful thing that we are trying to do here. I think the best thing is to labor to give the government time, engage the government. But even if you say auto government was this, this is what we're saying. This is what government should be doing without incrementing this price at this time. So they both feel that you are putting them on a corner because mm -hmm. you are supposed to engage them before on all these things before you 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 you, you would have removed the subsidy as they so it won't cause the kind of tension hardship that is causing that's what we are saying what the government is doing now is what they should have done immediately they came to power the mr president would have made his speech like we are going to be meeting with stakeholders regard the removal of first subsidy and we have we start with the nigerian labor congress we are constituting a team with the private sector that is the way to go. That is, if you say that you are going to be a government, that you're going to be a listening government and engaging government, that is what you should have done first. So, but it's ne it's never, it's, it's, ne it's, it's, it's a saying that it's, it's never too late. It's late than never. So, definitely, let's see how, how it, I think it's, it's, the, it's the right thing. But neighbors should exercise patience and get themselves involved in this uh, negotiation too. And I hope the government itself also are not trying to cause confusion within the labor union to cause divide and rule, and then you cause commotion between TUC and 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 and, 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 uh, and uh, NLC. I don't think that would be the right thing for the government to do. I think the government, if you are take, sitting with TUC today, I expect them to be sitting with labor to collect what labor's demands are, because labor is the largest labor we are talking about. The labor saying they are going to strike, and the electricity workers are saying they are going to join them. A lot of people are going to join them. So when you look at the TUC, you see that the, the, the people that have, have always thought that the major challenge of why we are here today, because they are the ones that have been confessing that subsidy must not be removed, subsidy must not be removed, the trade union congress, no pen and pencasy. So they have been the cause of the challenges that we are we are having now. So it will be good for the government to extend an olive brand to labor, go and meet them and see how we can. Because labor strike is, is going to be more, uh, more uh, uh, disastrous for us at this moment because mm -hmm. the, the academic staff, you know, investing, we joined the Nigerian Medical Association, we joined. So it's more engaging for government to engage the Nigerian Labor Congress okay. and then get the TUC also all involved and come up with a common template and both of them work towards one goal on um, reducing the suffering on the Nigeria because actually you, you, you it's only uh, a foolish man that will say that Nigerians are not hard hit by right. this increment, especially with the, with, the, with the percentage. But again, like I said, we are going through a major surgery. Mm in this economy and that surgery you know when you postpone a surgical and they say that you are at risk so that's what we have we have postponed this subsidy thing right. up to now so we are at risk okay Mokta, just before we leave this topic now just one final question uh, you expressed um, excitement about um, the tax holiday and of course the uh, the federal government is saying that it has it has actually uh, mentioned, uh, you know, the increase of um, uh, minimum wage to a living wage in the president's inaugural speech. But my question right now would be, uh, just how far can that go when, when we talk of um, palliatives uh, of, of a sort? Because not all Nigerians would actually benefit from tax holidays. You know, what kind of pal um, palliative would actually uh, go around that will affect um, even those in the nitty-gritty? Um, um, you see... <laughs> Just in definitely, you would think, um, I think when you talk about tax holidays, and if we have gotten everybody into the tax bracket, the informal sector, then you would have known what benefit this would have been to Nigeria. Because mm -hmm. we're only looking at the former sector, because that is a sector that is highly taxed. We've not been able to come up with um, ways to get the informal sector, which would have added up to like 70 to 80 percent to our tax revenue and also improve our GDP. So that's one work that this current administration will need to do. Mm -hmm. So you would have seen the effect of a tax holiday. So, but I think that's work, work in progress. Now, um, uh, incrementing minimum wage tax holiday is not the only way out of the, the current uh, challenge. That's, it's not just the only solution. Government will need to do further, like I've, I've said. 
um, their subsidies or that area. Most of the subsidies that can benefit every Nigeria has to be a subsidy that has to do with putting food on the tables of Nigeria. True. You and I know. So agricultural mm. subsidy must be there. Okay. Must be there. Either support for farmers mm. in terms of them getting credit to then the transportation subsidy also move. We need to come up with that. And uh, we also say, I'm not talking about just going to uh, bring in buses and say take civil servants or take farmers or reduce costs. In financial subsidy, I'm talking about looking at the value chain then then you talk about infrastructure good route so that all maintenance right. of these vehicles and all that so um, again the major challenge that we have that is causing our problem in this country even if you look at that is the exchange rate that's what is driving inflation mm. how do you address that if you address that you bring down inflation and you bring down cost of living all right all right thank you so much I, I'll, I'll just take a quick break and now Mokhtar, when we'll come back we'll be looking at uh, the issue of uh, unifying our multiple exchange rate and what it means to uh, nigerians and of course and the country in a moment uh, business insight returns shortly don't go away <laughs> 